Here we have a small pan supported by two strings. We have a mass of the pan that's 42 grams. We'll call that mass is 42 grams. And the maximum tension that the string can support, tension max, we'll call it, is 2.8 newtons. I'm writing down information as I read it from the problem statement. We add mass gradually to the pan until one of the strings snaps. Which string? How much mass? Okay, let's do some geometry to start. Hopefully that'll help me get my mind around what's going on. We have some angle in here, alpha one, that by alternate interior angles is going to be this angle here, alpha one. And we'll call this one alpha two, and similarly have an angle over here, alpha two. I can find those because I have a right triangle in here. We wouldn't normally expect this to be the case, but it is the case here. So alpha one is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent side, which is 10 centimeters over five centimeters, or 63.435 degrees. Alpha two can be found by summing the angles in our triangle to 180, or by pulling the same trick. Alpha two is the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, giving us 26.565 degrees. Now, we want to know the tensions, so we're going to do a free bike diagram that includes those tensions, if at all possible. I propose that we choose a point A right here and do a free body diagram about that point A. We'll draw our point A, and then we'll include all the forces acting on that point A. That means that we have tension one and tension two, as well as my mass of the pan plus whatever mass I'm adding to it times gravity. We have some geometric information that it makes sense to include. That alpha one that I now know and alpha two. I'll also define some coordinates, y and x. All right, we have a free body diagram. Next step is we'll apply static equilibrium to this free body diagram to hopefully be able to find what's going on with the tension. We can start with whatever we'd like. I'm going to start with sums of the forces in the x. Summing my forces in the x direction gives me zero. We have some component of T2. This will be T2 times cosine of alpha two. And then we have a negative contribution from T1 because it's going in the negative x direction times the cosine of alpha one, and this sums to zero. That's one equation with two unknowns, T2 and T1. We can't solve one equation with two unknowns. We need another equation. Let's try writing a y expression. Sums of the forces in the y, where this is up, is equal to zero. This gives us T1 times sine of alpha one plus T2 times sine of alpha two minus my weight M plus M times G has to sum to zero. That's another expression with two unknowns, T1 and T2, but a third unknown, M. So we have three unknowns with only two equations. What do we do? Let's see if we can figure out between T1 and T2 what's going on. I'm going to take this over here and say that if I solve for T2 in terms of T1, I can say that T2 is equal to T1 times the cosine of alpha one. So if I add T1 cosine alpha one to both sides and then divide by cosine alpha two, we have divided by cosine alpha two, which I can plug in alpha one and alpha two. And this tells me that T2 is equal to 0 0.5 times T1. This seems useful to me because we know we're adding mass until the string breaks. So from here, I believe I can tell you which string is going to break. This says that the tension in string two is always twice or always one half of whatever the tension in string one is. 
So if I have one Newton in string one, it's 0.5 Newtons in string two. This implies that I would expect tension one to be higher always, so it would be the one that would break. So if I'm adding mass until it breaks, we'll say that tension one becomes 2.8 Newtons, and then tension two ends up half of that according to this equation, which is 1.4 Newtons. And which string snaps? String one, which was the left string. So the left string snaps. I guess it didn't explicitly ask for the tension, but it wanted to know which one snapped. That's how we know which one snaps. And now with our tension one and tension two, we can substitute these back in here and solve it for our unknown m. I'm going to leave that for you to do. It's one equation with one unknown. We know all the other things now. It's just that little m that we need to solve for. And we should be able to do so, leaving us with mass equal to 0 0.277 kilograms. One thing to watch out for is that this big M is in grams. You need to do a unit conversion from grams to kilograms to make sure that you're consistently in kilograms. And there we go. We were able to figure out how much mass we had to add to that to make the string break and which of the two strings snapped.